Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. I would just like to um, speak a prophetic word that the Lord gave me on uh, June 4th, 2018. And I would like to ask you to please pray and ask Jesus Christ to um, shed his blood of protection over us as we pray together as brothers and sisters in Christ. And I plead the blood of Jesus over my channel, over all of you watching, and over myself. Um, so the Holy Spirit have been putting upon my heart, uh, m many different times about the anti C. I I don't even like to say that word with his anti, but, um, the Holy Spirit kept dropping the word Sidon into my spirit. And he led me to this map. And, uh, this is a map about prophets in Israel and, uh, Judah or Judah rather. Um, and so he led me to this map and this is actually, um, really cool. I have a study Bible. So this is Sidon and you can see here where it shows you Sidon and Tyre, T-Y-R-E, side by side, which is now Lebanon. Okay. So on June 4th, I was praying and he kept putting that on my heart and he was speaking about the anti C. Um, and I started to look into the word Sidon and, um, you know, he said that he is on his way. He's speaking about the anti C antichrist anti C. Okay. So I looked up an article about tear tire, and Sidon. They were famous in ancient Near East. They are also important cities in the Old and New Testaments. Both are now located in Lebanon, with Tyre being 20 miles south of Sidon and only 12 north of Israel-Lebanon border. Today each is just a shadow of their former selves. Okay? Sidon, called Seda, today is Arabic for fishing. It was named after the firstborn son of Canaan, which is in the book of Genesis 10:15, and probably settled by his descendants. The northern border of ancient Canaan extended to Sidon, Genesis 10:19. Later, Jacob spoke of it as the boundary of Zebulun, Genesis 49:13, and Joshua included it as part of the land promised to Israel, Joshua 13:6. Sidon was included in the inheritance of Asher on its northern boundary, Joshua 1928, but it was not taken by that tribe in conquest. Settled from the beginning as a city, Sidon was built on a promontory with a nearby offshore island that sheltered the harbor from storms. And I found that in um, BibleArchaeology.org. Okay, 20 miles south of Sidon in the middle of a coastal plain tier called Sour in Arabic today was constructed on a rock island of a few hundred yards out in the Mediterranean. In fact, the city took its name from the rock island. Tyr comes from Sem Semitic, Hebrew, Arabic, Babylonian, Suru, and Egyptian, meaning rock. And a footnote here, which I think is very important, um, in the Gospels, you notice Jesus refers to a woman as a dog. If you look closely, you will see this story takes place in the era of Tyre, here, in Sidon. And um, Sidon is where Jezebel's from. Ooh, and the Jezebel spirit is very destructive, so be very leery. She's on the loose. Put your armor of God on every single day. Um, and, um, the possessed woman was most likely a temple prostitute. He's speaking about the woman, um, when Jesus talked to the woman as, uh, as a dog. Okay. The possessed woman was most likely a prostitute and Jezebel was fed to the dogs. Satan is also called the king of Tyre by Ezekiel and Jezebel is associated with the horror of revelation, sexual immorality. Um, jo jo Josephus notes Jezebel worshipped the god Beltus Ishtar and the symbol 
Herbaltus is Omega, which means the great and the end. How prophetic that John calls her the great whore and Revelation is the end for Satan, the father of lust. And you can look that up in John 8, the king of Tyre. So I found it very interesting that I was led to that article, um, again, in BibleArchaeology.org. Okay, this is how the Lord teaches me. I love that he's such a good teacher. Jesus leads. Okay, and then after that, I heard in my spirit the word allegory. And I have to look up a lot what the Holy Spirit tells me because Jesus is very intelligent. <laughs> Maybe he's trying to make me smarter. But the word allegory means um, a story, poem, or picture that can be interpreted to reveal a hidden meaning, typically a moral or political one. And I found another definition that also um, said parable is a form of an allegory. And that's how Jesus taught in parables. So I wanted to read uh, a word from June 5th. The Lord led me to precipice again. And this time he implied to me on the brink of danger or imminent. Um, the definition of precipice is a very steep or overhanging place, a hazardous situation. Uh, broadly, brink, remember just before Jesus had showed me also a Latin word, precipice, which has a different meaning. And I did a video on both of those. Okay, and this is, um, Holy Spirit is telling me that at times I may become afraid, but not to be afraid. Because he is always with me. He's telling me this is the calm before the storm, and he must shake to awaken. He also put upon my heart, east coast and west coast. Um, the Lord said, strong measures are necessary, spiritual purification attainment. Their agenda cannot touch my power. And I wrote, Amen. I believe the Holy Spirit is speaking of the new world order here. He said, do not fear. I have everything under control. Seek not your understanding when things hit, catastrophe implied. Seek wisdom of God. Many things have come against you, some to harm you, some were needed to sustain you, some set to build up your resilience and strength. Um, he said, I am chosen, reserved, and preserved. Many things will come against me, but not overcome me. And I believe that to be the same for you, all of you. Always remember you are not alone. Tell my children that everything will be restored after the shaking. People's eyes will be open. Okay. Um, I prayed on this since June 4th. I did have many attacks in between, probably because um, the enemy doesn't want me to speak. Um, I, I told Jesus I won't give up on, on him, even though I'm not the greatest videographer. Okay, the Lord also said, The masses will flock, seeking and thirsting for spiritual truths, my truths of the kingdom of God. Praise me, honor me, seek me, love me at all times. I am your God. Then when I asked for scripture confirmation, the Holy Spirit gave me Galatians 1, verse 5. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I also prayed, and asked Jesus for another scripture. Um, like I said, I prayed on this for days. And he gave me Revelation 21.5. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down for these words are trustworthy and true. Okay, and I prayed, like I said, I prayed on this uh, for many days. I also heard the word. Armageddon, and you can find that in um, Revelation um, 16, 16. Um, also heard uh, the man of perdition is at hand in my spirit. I heard that on June 6th, and I also heard um, Revelation 6-2 in my spirit. 
Again, I said, Revelation 16, 16 is, Then they gathered the kings together to the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. And I would like to actually read that commentary. Since I have a study Bible, that's what I love about this Bible. It's a study Bible. And it says here, um, turn that sideways. And I like this, that it, that it has commentary. It says, Armageddon comes from two Hebrew words, Mount and Megiddo. The mountain city of Megiddo stands at the head of the plains of um, Isdralon, south and east of Mount Carmel, where Elijah challenged the prophets of Baal. See map 7. And at the back of this Bible, which I believe is what I just showed you.